And before we get started um, for today's session, it's incredibly important, of course, to acknowledge our traditional lands. Um, so we acknowledge at Royal Roads University that the campus is located on the traditional lands of the Lekwungen peoples, the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. And it is with gratitude that we now learn and work here where the past, present and future of Indigenous and non-Indigenous students, staff and faculty come together. So grateful to be here, folks, and happy that you're with us today. And of course, the reason that we're here today is to explore the Doctor of Business Administration um, research workshop here. So um, at this point, I will turn it over to uh, program head Hassan Wafai to kick us off and get started today. Thank you very much, Oriana. Thank you. I appreciate that. And welcome, everyone. I'm glad to be here with you. I see here some comments. Mabel Ridge, what, last week I was with me uh, in, uh, in Mabel Ridge attending the summer uh, PC Summer Games. Uh, Vancouver, Langley, welcome. Uh, Montreal, welcome everyone, welcome. So uh, today we talk about Doctor of Business Administration, and we we will not talk about the general program description. Actually, we will try to dive deep into how to write a proposal. So we prepared a couple of slides at the beginning just to uh, just to refresh. Uh, our memory about the key aspects of uh, Doctor of Business Administration and uh, uh, the, the, the program. And then we will uh, discuss some, some examples about proposal, tutorial proposal. And the last part, we will turn off recording and allow us allow time for all of us to have a chat on about your uh, proposal. But before getting started, I would like here to acknowledge my colleagues. Uh, Ariana, thank you very much for uh, uh, helping us. Tracy, thank you for being here. Tracy, Royal Road Enrollment Advisors, you will be with us for the first uh, part of the session and then she will not be with us but she will be available uh, via email if you have any question about program admission and so on she will be the person to contact and also would like to acknowledge I Sakamoto uh, DBA program coordinator thank you for for being here uh, I with us so with that um here on so the agenda for today, we, we did the welcome, right? Uh, and why DBA? Uh, second part, DBA uh, uh, student research, how to build your initial proposal. And that is the focus of, uh, of this session today. And then your research problem. And that and that will that part will not be recorded to allow more flexibility for, for all of us. So why Royal Road DBA? We're always proud. We're very proud of our program. It's one of uh, it's a unique program here in BC and also in Canada. Uh, it's a hybrid program. It's it's a program that allow you to lead change within your industry or field to uh, to build your currency as a subject matter expert. Uh, to have authority to speak about specific topic. Uh, and also to uh, develop uh, original management related research that advances the uh, uh, management research and practices uh, being and, and have the opportunity to, to be part of Royal Road community of management researchers. And finally, it's also an opportunity to, to reflect on your leadership capacity and how to manage and how to lead within your uh, industry sector. Uh, and as I'm, I'm going through these slides, I would like to encourage you to ask me questions. Feel free to ask me a question. I'm happy to pause and answer the, whatever questions you, you, you may have. So uh, a common question I have, a very re repeated question, what's the difference between uh, DBA and a uh, master's degree? I have a master's degree, I have an MBA, I have two master's degrees, should I do DBA? Well, that is certainly your decision, without a doubt. But I would I, I would say the key difference between um, um, MBA or a master degree and DBA uh, master degree you take master you you MBA will allow you to lead within organization right you 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 you, you will get MBA to advance your your career to get a better position however DBA doctorate will allow you to lead 
within an industry that goes beyond the boundary of your organization to build your currency as a subject matter expert, to have the authority to say, well, I am an expert in this field that goes beyond my organizational boundaries. So a DBA program, any, like any doctorate, will, will give you that authority uh, and the subject uh, and, and the currency. Uh, also, another another main difference, uh, a master degree focuses on applying knowledge, while doctoral program focuses on producing knowledge. So in a master program, you learn all different kinds of theory and tools, right? For example, HR, HR, there are different process for, for HR, screening, recruiting, da, 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 da. So you learn how to apply that. If you talk about operation and supply chain management, you learn lean operation, right? The key aspects of lean and how you apply lean. Same for marketing, so same for strategy, finance, accounting, da, da, da. But in the doctoral program, you goes beyond applying knowledge to producing knowledge. So you will contribute to existing body of literature. You will have your own contribution to knowledge. And that will be the outcome of your research. Another, another question I always have, it's what's the difference between PhD program, a conventional PhD program, a conventional uh, professional doctorate. They are there are several DBAs uh, and other professional doctorates in the South and in, in the United States, also in, in Europe, uh, available. Uh, what's the difference between these programs, the conventional PhD program and Royal Road DBA program? Uh, so uh, I, I always uh, mention the term hybrid design. And the hybrid design, we explain that it is uh, the Royal Road DBA, it, it has a hybrid design, meaning that it brings the rigor of conventional PhD program with the applied focus of professional doctorate. So we would like to see the Royal Road DBA that brings the best from both worlds, the conventional PhD and professional doctorate. So... Here we have more discussion and this slide, you could find it on the website because this is based on our uh, own research when we started this, when we when we designed the program. So in terms of the program design, I'm, 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 I'm not gonna explain all the dimensions, but I'm gonna give examples here. In terms of program design, PhD normally in, in, in Canada, uh, it's a non-modular. It, it does include some two courses, but it's mainly, uh, research focus. Professional doctorate is mainly modular, credit rated, and taught components. There's a very, very little research component in a professional doctorate. Royal Road, actually, it's, it's a modular, but it's a research focus. So uh, we always say it's a research focus program. In the, DBA pro in the DBA program at Royal Road, you will have the first year courses that prepare you to do research, but the rest of the program is all about research. Uh, another dimension, only an example here, uh, in terms of preparation for employment, the yellow one, I'm focusing on the yellow one, right? Uh, preparation for employment. Conventional PhD program, ideally supposed to prepare you for academic careers. However, in Canada, 70% of PhD graduates, they couldn't, they couldn't find job in academic careers, right? They couldn't find job in, in academia. Uh, uh, professional doctorate prepare you to work in the industry. Royal Road DBA prepare you to work in, in academia and beyond academia. So in business school here around Canada, you go check and you will find that there will always one or two faculty member who have a DBA uh, I mean, degree. So uh, DBA, it's a recognized degree to get you into academia, but it's also a recognized and strong uh, credential to work in the industry. In terms of knowledge dissemination, another example, uh, uh, PhD program and normally focuses on disseminating knowledge uh, to academic audience, meaning you need to publish in a peer-reviewed journals. Professional doctorate focuses on communicating research to professional and public audiences. 
Royal Road DBA, we have both focus. So we would like to, we would like, we, 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 we encourage our student to publish in peer reviewed article, but at the same time, we encourage our, our student to publish in professional and public uh, 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 outlets or uh, for uh, professional and public audiences. Now, the program designed to give flexibility for students to choose what focus they would like to, uh, 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 they would like to take. It depends on where they wanted to work after the program and what is their uh, uh, final, uh, what, uh, what's their, uh, I mean, passion. They are interested in continue to work in the, in the industry. DBA program will help them to, again, to build their currency as a subject matter expert, or if they wanted to continue working in academia, as we said, there's 20, 30% of our current doctoral program, uh, doctoral students are faculty member in other institutions, DBA program will allow them to also uh, continue to work in, in academia. Now, admission, uh, seven years of professional experience, of which five at management level, a relevant master degree. How to apply, there's the application fee and they are supporting document that you need to submit. Part of those, uh, one of the, I mean, one of these documents is the initial proposal, and that is the focus of today' uh, webinar, uh, the research proposal. So, before getting to the research proposal, I just wanted to highlight that our aromat advisors here we have, we have, we have Tracy here are always available to address any question related to the program admission requirement, to, you know, transcript. I have this particular master degree. Would that be fine with that? Of course, they they will be available. They grade, they quick, uh, certainly quicker, uh, I mean, than me. If you send me an email, I probably will forward the email to, to Tracy asking her to respond to you. So, uh, uh, they're here to help you address all uh, the questions you may have about the admission requirement. Today, we focusing we will focus on the research proposal, and this is one of, if not the most important requirement. So, what does the journey look like in a DBA program? I always describe it as a liberating, right? Uh, it's 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 a different way of thinking and to adopt different way of thinking it's a journey it's a journey that you need to you need to be courageous uh, to take uh, it's an investment that you will put uh, intellectual investment social investment so to reach to the point where you have the authority to speak as a subject matter expert This is the, and thank you for updating the picture. This is the picture uh, for our uh, most recent cohort, 2024 colleagues who just joined the program uh, in January. So we have only one intake per year and the maximum number we can accept is 18 students. We never get to 18 actually. We, we around between 16 and, and, and 18. And again, here you can see the uh, at the bottom of the page, you see the link to uh, cohort bios. I do encourage you to visit uh, uh, the, uh, that particular website so you could browse our colleagues, I mean, bio. Here's some pictures from the first cohort, the residency, and we talk about the residency. Residency, it's not it's not about classes where you sit and the instructor will come in and give you the wisdom. No, no. It is more of interactive uh, conference-based uh, 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 residency. Okay, now get to the point, to the research proposal. And I understand that you are in the process, or most of you are in the process of writing a proposal. That is, it's only five pages though. 
But what's in this five page? What we do, what, what we expect, we expect to see a research problem. The key element and the most important, I will say the most important element of the research is how to define the research problem. And based on the research problem, you will formulate a research question. That's one key element. The second element, it's the an explanation of the importance of the problem. Explain how the intended research will likely contribute to management practice and research. He highlights from the literature. And finally, explain how the research will, is aligned with your career goals and objectives. Let me let me go through each of these elements in, in, in a little in, in a little more detail. So the first one is a, a research problem. I would like to see if I can if I can have a highlighter here. Possible. Rihanna, do you know how I can have a highlighter? So I can highlight my a great question. Let me see if I can figure it out on my end, Hassan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very, very much. I know that question will be greater if I if, if I have asked you before before before, before we get started. So, thank you. Uh, so, how to define a research problem? So, we expect from colleagues who apply to the program to present a research problem. How would you do this? First, the research problem must be management business related problem. And normally you identify problem based on your observation or experience. So I've been, for example, I've been in a company for 30 years. I noticed that, well, for example, construction. I noticed that uh, construction uh, industry is dominated by males. Females are not exactly uh, I mean, they are not they 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 are not getting to a senior positions in construction. That's based on your observation. Or I've been in the uh, in, in public sector for a quite long time, and you know, IT always a problem. Once we start IT project, this doesn't seem to have an end. <laughs> always we have a project after project after project. Why? Why? What's the problem there? So. So the problem again is based on your observation, based on your experience, you're all coming to the program with a lot of experience, or it could be based on the literature, right? So you read a recent paper and you find, well, you know, there's uh, in this paper, the authors highlighted that there's, uh, uh, um, there's a gap in the literature, right? For example, it's not clear how AI, it's not I, AI, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I Sakamoto, of course, it's not I, AI, artificial intelligence, can help, let's say, uh, HR practices. Or, we, or perhaps the author argued that it is unclear what factors contribute to the failure of X kind of projects. That's based on your literature. So you need to be clear about that problem. And once you have that problem, then you need to research the problem. Has a problem been addressed before? Oh, here you go, thank you. I see a pointer here. Um, now the question is how I can get it. Hmm. I will try to do that maybe later. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So, uh, uh, and then you will, once you have that problem, you need to, you need to make sure that you, you, you read about the, the problem. Has a problem been addressed before? Now, if the problem has been addressed before, this is no longer a problem, a valid research problem. You need to demonstrate, and I'm gonna, you will, you will see this statement again from me. You need to demonstrate that you have researched the problem. Again, the proposal, it's only a demonstration. Uh, 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 let me put it like this way. It's an exercise. It's an exercise, short exercise, that you have the skills to problematize an issue. 
you can, once you are in the program, of course, you can change the topic, you can tweak the topic, you have all the flexibility. At this point, since it's admission requirement, we just want to make sure that we understand your skills, how the skills related to how you can problematize an issue. So how to define problem? Be clear about the scope of the problem. The research problem shouldn't be too broad. For example, how to improve management practice? This is too broad. How to improve public sector? That's too broad. That's not a researchable problem. Researchable problem must be precise. And we do understand at this point, you, it may not be exactly precise, that's fine but as precise as possible. Try to articulate the problem in a couple of sentences. If you can articulate the problem in a couple of sentences, the problem is precise enough. Try to get to, once you have this, try to think about the question that captured the problem. Let me just here pause and I see it here, I see a question uh, from uh, Sigran. Sigran, uh, ho hopefully I, I pronounced the name correctly. Could the research problem, could, could the research topic be that the problem has been addressed in different way to evaluate different solution? Yes, it could be. Yes, it could be. But that need to have an argument. I'm gonna explain a little bit about, about, about that. So the research question must capture the research problem. There are various ways to formulate research question, and you don't need to worry how accurate it is at this point because this is what you're gonna learn once you are in the program. Whether you're gonna use the word what, how, how can, and everyone has different way. There's uh, the explanatory how, the exploratory how, right? Avoid yes, no question. For example, does X lead to Y? Yes, no, avoid the yes, no question. Only include one question. Only include one question. Try to think about one question. And then if possible, define a set of objectives to operationalize the research, if, if, if possible. And again, we understand at this point, we only need to see evidence that you have the capability to problematize an issue. I like that quote and I put that quote here for you. If I if if I had an hour to solve a problem and my life depended on that on the solution, I would spend the first 55 minutes determining the proper question to ask. But once I know the proper question, I could then uh uh I I, I, I can't see the rest of it. Uh yeah. Let me see it here. I could I could solve the problem in less than five minutes. So once you are clear about the research question, research problem and research question, then you need to write them. When you write them, you need to demonstrate that you have researched the problem. Someone could could tell me, well, we don't have access to peer-reviewed publication. We don't have access. You you don't need to buy access. Uh, I mean, you could go to Google Scholar and just uh, type keywords that's relevant to your research and look at the abstracts of the paper, and that will be enough at this point. In writing, make it clear what is known and not known at a high level. What did researchers and practitioners say about the problem? Is the problem under research? You may have one solution for the problem or one perspective or one insight, but it's under research and there could be different way to look at it. Was the problem addressed before? How will the intended research contribute to the ongoing research? How, what are you going to contribute to existing body of literature? As Sigaran said, would I provide different perspective to it? A different way to approach it? And that is valid. 
Of course, because there is no one one fixed solution for any problem. We talk about wicked problem, right? Complicated problems. Explain why the problem is important. And that is very important as well in your research. Only include published work. Your observation is important. We appreciate that. And it's a very, we really highlight, we really value your experience. But in this proposal, we need to have published work. That's very important. Based on, it is it is not sufficient to say, well, based on my 30 years of experience, I found that uh, public sector always struggle to implement IT project. That is not enough. We need to see that you quoted, you referenced publication that speaks to that particular piece of knowledge that you included in your uh, uh, proposal. Here are some examples. Our current example, Nathan Banda. Nathan Banda, it's uh, his uh, his uh, 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 he joined the program in two thousand twenty. It's the first cohort, a friend, a colleague. Uh, uh, Nathan, at the time he, he joined, when he joined, he had fifteen years of experience in healthcare. He has a master in healthcare. He did not have a master in business. Master, that's a relevant master degree. And he is leading a nursing unit, right, since 2016. What's a research problem? Now, from his experience, Nathan, he said, well, uh, you know, um, there's a perpetual nursing retention challenge in rural area in Canada because he's managing a, a nursing unit in rural area in Alberta. In 2018, he described his own experience. In 2018, 40% of, of, uh, of, of, of registered nurses just left over two months. Imagine you lose 40% of your workforce, and that's not an easy to replace workforce. It's a problem. And then he went to study, and, and, and then he went to read the literature. He found that there's no enough literature. I don't know why, why this is happening. How to retain nurses? There are research, though, about retaining let's say engineers retaining uh, a different type of knowledge workers, but how to retain nurses in rural area in Canada, there's very little research around that, very specific. That's a research problem. And then he, found, he formulated the question, what are the factors affecting nursing retention in the rural areas? That's his research question. And again, I'm sourcing 2022, that question, had evolved, and now he's dealing with a different, completely maybe set of uh, factors. But that was the question he included in his uh, application to join the DBA program. Another example, Jason Major. Jason has a master in art in security, defense, management, and policy. He's a colonel, re retired with over 30 years of, of, of service, and he is now a director in uh, for federal government. Okay, so what's the problem? The problem, Jason said, well, there's a lack of resilience in air transport sector. Well, he noticed what happened in COVID, and he said, well, COVID-19 caused significant shock and period of uncertainty to aviation industry in Canada. Thousands of Canadians have lost, the, I mean, the, their job. We all experienced issues when we traveled right we all experience there's something wrong there there's a lack of experience and he said there's a lack of research that addresses resilience in air transport sector there's a growing literature and organization resilience in general but resilience in air transport sector this research is this area is under research then he formulated the research question, how can resilience performance be improved to enable the long-term business success of the air transport sector? Just to, to, to let you know that, again, that question has changed once he is in the program, once, once he knew the literature, dig into the literature, work with his supervisor, then the, the question changed. Another example, Tasha Proogs. Tasha defended her... Uh, dissertation uh, two weeks ago, and she did fantastic. And Tasha, she is now faculty 
faculty member at Royal Road. I mean, Tasha has a MBA program, has a two master program. She is indigenous uh, uh, education, uh, education educator. When she joined Royal Road, she was part of another university, Vancouver Island University. I mean, when she joined uh, uh, the DBA program, she, uh, she was also director for Couch and Tribes Fishing Enterprise. What's the research problem? The research problem for Tasha that the Canadian Indigenous Entrepreneurship participation rate is only 6.26% compared to non-Indigenous participation rate of 11.75. That's according to, to Statistics Canada. Then she formulated the question to explore why. Why? I mean, despite increasing entrepreneurial support surface are available for indigenous entrepreneur in Canada, a lower number of indigenous people engage in entrepreneurship. Now, these are the example. I would like now to take one example and explain to you the writing process. Now, let's take Jason, for example, uh, since he's my student, so I'm working with him. So I took permission to get some of his work and I could uh, highlight it here. So the, the proposal need to have introduction, right? This is introduction and, uh, and another element, research problem, literature review, research design. These are the elements. These are the, let, let me say this could be the structure of your proposal. It's totally up to you how you how you structure the proposal, but could be could that could be one possible structure of the proposal. <laughs> so in the introduction section, Jason introduced the purpose of the research. Right? So the, the research proposal, he said in the introduction, you can see on the right hand, the research proposal investigates uh, organizational resilience in Canadian airline. It aims to provide a deeper understanding of resilience in Canadian airline and to provide research-based recommendation to improve resilience in, air, in, in Canadian airline. This is in the introduction section. And then he went to describe, to give a brief introduction about the proposal. Well, this proposal, it, it, it's divided into several sections. It begins by describing the star, uh, a, a start, uh, startling, sorry, lack of resilience in many Canadian airlines in the face of historical disruption combined with lack of academic literature on organizational resilience in the airline. It includes a description of research problem, purpose, questions, and so on. So that's the introduction part of the, of the proposal. Then for the research problem, then he described his research problem as following. The research problem consists of two elements. First element, there's enough evidence to suggest that Canadian airlines are highly vulnerable and lack of resilience. And he provided specific reference to support his his claim. He's making a claim here, right? He didn't say that, well, based on my 30 years of experience and my long, no, no. He said, based on these references here, and these are some of them 2003 references to 2012, but 2021, right? This is some, some recent references. This is the first element. So there's a practical problem airline, Canadian airline are dealing with. But the second element of the problem from his perspective that there's little research around that. And he also referred to specific authors who spoke directly about the lack of research. Now, to me, these two sections are really the, the most important section in your proposal at this point. At this point, for you, these are the most important sections. Once these sections are right, then the rest will be easier. So let me let me pause here and see. I see some questions here uh, in the chat and just open up for more questions. Knowing that we will have the last 45 minutes to have uh, uh, more discussion uh, about your research question. 
But before, before I mean, pausing here, just wanted to, uh, sorry, to highlight this. And then after describing the problem, he say, well, this is my research question and this is my research objective. Okay. Uh, I see Passam. Do you mean having one question as a main research question to perform the research upon? Uh, because sometimes some schools ask for three questions at minimum. I would suggest only one question. I will I will suggest only one question and build the argument for that question. Remember, you have only five page. Baba Jet, uh, I was wondering if the idea of pausing a single research question is regular to Royal Road DBA program. No, actually, it's not. Um, technically, uh, uh, once you're on the program, I mean, in the proposal, it's very uncommon, very uncommon to find to have more than one research question. And once again, the, the formal proposal will need to have one research question. And the formal proposal, that's two years, almost a year and a half or two years after you join the program, you will need to submit the main proposal. So uh, uh, traditionally, only one research question is what we expect. Uh, uh, for a uh, uh, doctoral proposal. Basam and Babajid, uh, do you have any further follow-up, any follow-up question on, on these? Did I answer your question? Give me some hint. Thumb up, thumb down. All right. We'll leave it here, but if you have any follow-up question, please feel free to ask. So once you write your research question, your research problem, you will, of course, build the argument. Build the, uh, the, 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 the argument. And this argument should be based from literature, should be evidence-based. And we expect in this initial five page is to include key highlights from literature. And that is, I would say, uh, um, important if you want your, uh, 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 if you want your proposal to stand uh, to stand out as 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 a competitive proposal, right? So we expect you to include key highlights from literature that and demonstrate that you have done some search around the topic that you are interested in. Include it's not a full literature review. We just wanted to see a few uh, a few highlights from the literature. Now, in the section when you describe your research design, and here's, the, I mean, we don't expect a thorough, detailed research design. You will, we understand that you will have a lot of time to learn research design, the, the different approach, different methodology, different strategy, paradigm, so on, so on, so on. And the program will offer you all this. You will have three courses in the program about research design. Uh, uh, but at this point, and they, it will be nice if you highlight how do you plan to address the problem. Maybe maybe include one paragraph. That's it, right? One, only one paragraph. High level. How do you plan to address the the problem, uh, the research problem? Now here is a few advices I would like to provide, and these are the final two three slides for me before we move uh, to the next uh, uh, part of this uh, workshop or, or session. First, research your passion. Passionate research often result in thoughtful and rigorous research. This is, this is gonna be with you, the topic will be with you for the next four or five years at least. 
So you really need to think about a topic that you're passionate about. And remember, this will also contribute into your professional identity as a subject matter expert in specific topic. So research your passion. Do not align, you, you, you don't, you don't, I don't recommend, I don't recommend that you, uh, 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 if there's an, a, a job opportunity and you wanted to direct your research to capture that job op op opportunity, I don't normally recommend that, right? Align it with your overall career rather than specific opportunity. Know your motivation. Why a, why a DBA? This is a long journey. Um, it's, why do you want to do a DBA program, a, a DBA degree? What is your motivation? And identify your competitive advantage. For example, Nathan Banda, when he did his research, exploring factors that contribute to nursing retention in, in rural area in Canada. Well, he has a competitive advantage. He's the right person to do the research. He is exactly the right person. He has access to the data. He knows the context. He, and he can make impact. Similarly, I'm, I'm, I mean, Tasha or Jason and every doctoral student uh, uh, select topic that they have, they, 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 I will say they have competitive advantage over other researchers, right? When you select your, uh, your doctoral topic. Now, finally, I would like here to just uh, a few, a few points, uh, as you're writing your proposal, consider the structure of the proposal. We don't have a format or sample to provide you. We'd like to see how you will structure your proposal. Regardless how you will structure it, you will really need to address the key elements that we discussed, research problem, research question. You need to include key highlights from the literature, and you need to explain how this topic align with your career. The length of the proposal is a five page. Um, the more is not better, right? The more is not better. So I would recommend to stick to that limit. Uh, make sure to cite every piece of information that you include in your proposal. I always describe it, uh, I mean, failing to cite, it's a case of death. Your proposal will automatically be rejected if you fail to cite the information uh, uh, that you used in your proposal. Uh, your proposal is also an example that demonstrates your writing skills. So make sure that you write clearly, Make sure that you uh, uh, take your time to proofread your proposal. Uh, I always recommend that you take time also to consult with someone else, to read the proposal for you, to have a different perspective. Uh, that's, that's, that's very Im important. Okay, now with that, we can move to the next part of the workshop. But before that, I see here two questions from Bassam. Bassam, hopefully I, I, I pronounce the name right. Uh, how do you make sure this one question is the best one? Well, that is, that's important. That's important consideration. Uh, to me, uh, the research question is a plus at this point. Yeah, here you go, good. Uh, uh, to me, the research question is a plus. Not all applicants have a research question. All applicants must have a research problem for the research proposal to be considered. Those who really propose a, a question, that will be a plus. 
you know, we understand this is too early for you at this point to expect the best of a question, but at least you consider a possible question. Again, we are not looking at we are not looking at the, the best at this point, a possible valid question for you for your proposal. Well, for 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 example, the example of uh, challenges in implementing IT project in public sector. That's a problem, right? Now, what could be the question? You could say, how can public sector improve, right? What are the factors that contribute to the failures of project? You could you could put the question in in, in different way, but the, the once you're on the program, you will learn different types of the questions and 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 and, and the way you craft the question actually it will be very much influenced by the existing literature and your review of the existing literature. Now, uh, the second question, can sources of data and quotes extracted from other sources to back up your question come from articles not related to academia, example, news, book, magazine? Yes, it can, but we do recommend to have peer-reviewed articles. Yes, it can, of course. Uh, news, uh, uh, um, magazines, these are valid sources at this stage, I would say. Uh, but mostly they reflect author perspective. They are not based on empirical studies, right? So we do we do expect to see I would say a number of peer reviewed uh, uh, articles in your proposal. But Sam, I hope I hope I did address your question. But thank you. These are good questions, though. Thank you. Okay. So what we're gonna do now? We will we will thank you. Thank you. So what what are we gonna do now? I would like to I mean now invite you to join me in an exercise together. And for this exercise, we will take three, four minutes to think about the problem situation that you are interested in, right? And you write it down, maximum two sentences. Take three, four, three to five minutes, you write it down in a separate paper, write, why is it important? Uh, Ariana will share with us a link to a Word document, shared Word document. What you're gonna do, you click on that link and it will take you to a Word document on a Google Drive. I would like to ask you, once you're comfortable with the research problem, the statement, the two sentences, then you, you type it on that Google document we will have this google document shared on the screen and we will have a conversation all together about your research problem i will invite you to pick up a mic and discuss this there will be no recording you don't need to worry so it's a it's a safe uh, it's a safe space for all of us all right with that ariana can i ask you to stop recording Absolutely. I'll stop that now. Thank you to the folks on the recording, um, just for anybody that's tuning in later. So I will go ahead and stop that now, and then we will move on here. One moment.